Hey everybody, so in this video we are going to take a look at expanding and factoring expressions, um, focusing on just mostly positive numbers. Um, so our goal is to use the distributive property um, to, like I said, expand, so to make an expression bigger, and then to factor, which is actually to rewrite it in two smaller parts that are multiplied together. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like, and we're going to jump right in with a situation. So let's say you were making a milkshake, right, a strawberry milkshake, and here's your recipe. So the recipe says the serving size is for one person, and you would need four scoops of ice cream and one-fourth cup of milk. Well, what if you wanted to make enough for you and two friends, so three total people? Well, you would need four scoops of ice cream for you, four scoops of ice cream for your first friend, and four scoops of ice cream for your second friend. So that would be 12 total scoops of ice cream. And then same thing with the milk. One-fourth cup for you, one-fourth cup for your first friend, and then one-fourth cup for your second friend. So that would mean that you would need three-fourths cups of milk. So we could add, just like I was explaining, or you could multiply, right? Four scoops of ice cream times three people will get you 12. And then same thing, one-fourth cup of milk times three people would get you three-fourths. So it turns out that if we want to triple the entire recipe, right, to make enough for three people, all we need to do is just triple each ingredient. Right, and we're going to be able to take that idea and translate it to some more um, math problems. So, the challenge down here it took our word problem and actually wrote a math expression out of it. Right, this three out front is going to tell us we want to make three times whatever is inside our parentheses. Right, maybe those numbers and letters look familiar. Right, four I just means four scoops of ice cream right, I being ice cream, and one-fourth M is just one-fourth cup of milk, right? So all this is saying is three times the entire thing in parentheses, which is your recipe. We said that's the same thing as three times each ingredient, which would have gotten us 12 scoops of ice cream and three-fourths cup of milk, right? We really just use the distributive property. Um, we're going to look at in the next example how to do it with um, this way called the rectangle method. But you might have also seen it um, a lot of times teachers show it with these two arrows. Just indicating that that three out front of the parentheses just means take every single thing inside the parentheses and multiply it by three. So we're going to apply that concept in our next example. Um, so just like I said, here's a numerical example, right? Three times the entire recipe is three times each ingredient, right? So three times 20 plus three times 25. And then again, you could draw in these arrows if you'd like to see that. All right, so let's jump right in with one example where we're going to expand. So again, think about what that word means. It means to make bigger. So if we had three times, and then in parentheses, x plus two, if we wanted to represent that with a picture, Maybe you would draw it something like this, right? It's three times this recipe called x plus 2, right? So there's really three groups of x plus 2. So this is just a little visual to help you see what it would look like. But the real skill that we're looking at for today is using this rectangle model. Um, and then, of course, before we do that, this just really means three groups of x and three groups of 2. Right, three times the whole recipe is the same thing as three times the first ingredient and three times the second ingredient. But what we're going to use is this rectangle method. Um, it becomes really helpful, especially when you start to see some examples that are a lot more involved. So I'm going to use some highlighters. Um, it might be a good idea for you to do that as well. First thing I'm going to highlight is the three, right, or the amount of like servings or the times we want to multiply the recipe. So I'm going to highlight that in yellow, and I'm going to put that on the left side of our rectangle. So that's where this 3 is coming from. And then I'm going to switch to, I'm going to use a blue highlighter, and I'm going to highlight the recipe part of it, right, or the x plus 2. And that is going to go on top of our rectangle. x, and then I'm just going to put a 2. You don't need your plus sign, but if it was like x minus 2, you would make this one a negative. Right, but since it's x plus 2, we can just make it positive. So think about 
What is your gut telling you? How would we fill in the boxes on this rectangle? Right? Maybe you're thinking multiplication. And if you are, you would be absolutely right. To fill in this space, take the yellow times the blue. So 3 times x just gives us 3x. And then to fill in the right spot on our rectangle, take the 3 times the 2, which would give us 6. And all we have to do to put this back together is take what was inside of our rectangle, 3x plus 6. So let's check and see if we did it. So again, the rectangle method is great. Sometimes you'll see it with these arrows, though. So we just need to make sure we took everything, so the x and the 2, everything inside the parentheses, and multiplied it by 3, which we did. So that is good. All right, so let's jump to the second slide, example 2. Um, so again, I'm going to use the same color for our highlighters. I'm just going to highlight both examples while I have it ready. So again, the first number is your yellow. And then everything in parentheses is your blue, which is going to go on top of your rectangle. All right, so we're going to make this one half, and then x and 6. And then the one on the bottom, so the one third is going to be out front. 9x, again, we have minus 12y, so we're going to make this a negative 12y. And then a minus 18, so you guessed it, we're going to make it a negative 18. All right, so why don't you pause this video, see if you can fill in the rest of those spaces, and then um, in a second you can check your work. All right, so take a look, see if you got some of the same answers in the boxes. Again, the way you fill them in is just take the yellow times the blue. So our first example, if we expanded this, right, by multiplying one half to each thing inside, each term, that's going to give us one half x plus three. And then for the bottom one, our final answer would be 3x minus 4y minus 6. The only thing that you might be wondering is, well, in the first of all, in the top example, the x and the 6, so the x and the number, had two different spaces on the rectangle, right? But down on the bottom one, the number and the x were together. Just think about why that might be, right? It actually turns out that in your problem, if it helps you, you can, of course, do this. Everywhere you see a plus sign or a minus sign, that is where your problem gets broken up, right? So like up here in the first example, there was one plus sign, so that would make two spaces on our rectangle. Um, and then same thing in the bottom one, there were three, so three spaces in our rectangle. So that's just a little uh, trick if you need some help remembering where you would break up your rectangle. All right, so again, we expanded, which means make it bigger. So all we're going to do in our example three and four is actually go the other way, which is factor. So you can see from our rectangle, it's filled in backwards, right? We were given the inside of the rectangle, and we need to figure out the outsides. So if we want to do that, we need to use this thing called the GCF, which is our greatest common factor. And that is going to go in this space. I'm sure you've heard GCF before. All that means is based on the 12x and the 6, we want to think about what is the biggest thing that they have in common. That could be a number, that could be a variable, it could be both, right? So we need to see what we can basically factor or pull out of both of those. So let's first look at the numbers. 1 is a 12 and 1 is a 6. So they're both even, so we can definitely pull out a 2. They're both multiples of 3, actually, so we could pull out a 3, right? And that would just leave us 4 and 2. But we can actually go another step further and actually pull out a 6, right? If we pull out a 6 from 12, 2 are left over. And if we pull a 6 out of a 6, well, it's just going to be a 1, right, from division. 12 divided by 6 equals 2. 6 divided by 6 equals 1. So we've pulled out part of our GCF. The only other thing we need to look at is like the variable part. So this term, 12x, that obviously has an x in it. 6 does not have an x. So we cannot pull out any variables, right? There are no letters that are in common between those two. The only thing we need to make sure we keep is that x from the 12x, right? That's not going anywhere. 
So again, we factored out the biggest thing these two things, the two terms have in common is a six. And if we pull that out of each one, what's left over is a two X for the first term and just a one for the second term. So all we need to do is just write our final answer here. So again, blue is going on top and that always meant the whole recipe, right? The thing in parentheses. And then the uh, number out front is gonna be um, the amount of them or the GCF. So the way we could write our final answer is six times two X plus one. So here's a number times the parentheses, right? A number times the entire recipe. And again, the way we could just check is we would wanna multiply six by each term inside. Six times two X definitely gives us 12 X and six times one definitely gives us the six inside, which is what we want. All right, so we have a little bit of time left. We're gonna have you try that final example four on your own. Again, remember that GCF is gonna go on this line out front of your rectangle. So think, what is the biggest number that I can factor out of all three terms? And is there a variable that I could factor out? Pause the video, see if you can get your answer, and then we'll check before we wrap things up. All right, so if you got a GCF of two, give yourself a pat on the back, that is awesome. Um, the reason two is the best. So 24, negative eight, and six are all even numbers. So you know that you for sure can factor out a two. You can't really factor out anything larger than two because no matter what you pick, something larger than two would make one of these numbers a fraction, which is fine. You can do that, but it's technically not the GCF. So I would leave it as just a two. Um, and then again, if you take each thing inside the rectangle, each term, and divide it by two, the first one leaves you with a 12D, second one gives you a negative 4E, and the third one gives you just a three. So all we need to do is just put this all back together in our final answer. Again, yellow going out front, blue going on top of the, um, the rectangle. So two times 12D minus 4E or plus negative, plus a positive three. And again, if we wanted to check it, we would just need to make sure that we multiplied two by every term inside our parentheses, and that would absolutely give us what was inside the rectangle. All right, so hopefully this video helped. Thank you for trying some of these examples. Um, and again, hopefully you just remember the rectangle method is gonna be a really useful tool when you need to expand or factor these expressions. So thanks for checking this video out, and I'll see you at the next one.